The once peaceful village of Rodenburg is now gripped by fear. Mysterious night attacks by an unknown force have pitted neighbor against neighbor, with no one knowing who to trust. And from his secret lair in the barren hills, the Orkin chieftain Kirok watches with delight as his plans to drive the villagers from their homes comes to fruition. By selectively attacking some villagers, but leaving others alone, he hopes to use their own jealousy and mistrust to destroy themselves. But Kirok failed to account for one development. The player characters hear of Rodenburg's plight and come to the town to investigate. And now, the game's afoot. Hello again, folks. K.R. King here, helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. So this episode is one of a continuing series about developing a long-term rivalry in your campaign. In this one, it's the players versus a brilliant Orkin chieftain called Kurok the Anointed One. So the setting for my homebrewed campaign is Melanor, which is a frontier continent. Uh, it's been settled in the last 200 years by the various races of the player character races. And when you do have this kind of thing, colonizers coming and settling, you have indigenous people that get pushed out. In this case, it's the orcs. They had this, you know, ancestral homeland of the Barren Hills. 50 years before, in the game time, there was this war with the orcs. Uh, they were defeated and driven away. So now this new chieftain, Kirok, has arisen. He's very smart. He's, you know, using different tactics. He's trying to drive out the villagers in Rodenburg, which is kind of the last human settlement before the barren hills. He's using these nighttime attacks. The orcs are disguising themselves with robes and hoods and whatnot. And in the last episode, I detailed the village of Rodenburg, some of its citizens, their relationships with each other and potentially with the players. And I promised to create some maps using the Dungeon Draft software, which I outlined uh, in an earlier episode. I love to make maps. I'm not that good of a map maker like a lot of us. I'm not an artistic person. I put these together just to play with uh, so don't expect some fancy map, but that maybe is good because that's maybe what you'll make as well. So the village map is going to be used to give the player characters a sense of proportion and mood. By proportion, I just mean, you know, how big is this village? How many structures are there? How many people live here? How is it laid out? This sort of thing. And I'm going to show you uh, a, a trick I use, which is repurposing an old map. And you can really use this in Dungeon Draft with the tracing capability. Uh, to give this sense. By mood, this is important for storytelling. You know, the people in this town are, have been under the tax, and they're going to be nervous. Fear grips this town. You know, if you've ever seen Tim Burton's film Sleepy Hollow, uh, with Johnny Depp as Ichabob Crane, he comes to investigate the murders in the town, and when he arrives, it's very misty and creepy, and uh, the townspeople, when they see him, they close their shutters, right? Everyone's scared. Well, this is the kind of mood I, I think that I'm going to try to create with Rodenburg. And the thing is, it's up in the hills, right? So I'm going to have rocks strewn everywhere, literally built out of the hills, which will create kind of a sense of, you know, shut in and uh, very claustrophobic. And then I'm because it's a wine growing area, I'm going to say, okay, it's a lot of mist in the air, a lot of atmosphere. Is this really good for winemaking? Hey, it's a fantasy world. So who cares? We're going for story and mood. So let's go deep inside Dungeon Draft. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using an existing map so that I can have a sense of scale and proportion. I'm not a professional map maker, but people that do know how thing, big things should be whenever. And using the Dungeon Draft Trace option, I can overlay my own ideas on an existing map. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for uh, Village, D&D, &D, uh, Images... And you have all these different images. And I'm just going to pick one here. Let's see. I think I'll say this one. This is from Wizards of the Coast. Green Nest. And I'll save image as Green Nest. All right. So now we're in GIMP. This is the uh, photo editing program I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create... A new layer and I'm gonna make this fill with transparency so I'm setting this to 6600 by 4500 the reason is I want to scale this image so that when I bring it into dungeon draft I can bring it up 
and have the scale of the village map match my hex size. And it's warning me, but I have no problem with that. So now I will go and I will open up this map that I saved from the internet. Okay. I say edit, copy, I go to this layer and I paste as a new layer. Okay, and notice it's small, so I'm going to scale that to scale. Move it around. Let's make sure I can scale it a little farther here. Scale. There we go. All right. Then I am going to export, and I'm going to export as uh, village, and I need to say JPEG. Very important. Because Dungeon Draft does not, at this point, bring in uh, ping files, PNG. So export, all right. So now that I have that image, I can go to Dungeon Draft. There, it's right there. And say, new file. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this all the way up to the highest number of tiles that Dungeon Draft allows, which is 128 by 128. Okay? And that is a lot of tiles, right? Then I'm going to use this setting called Trace, Trace an Image. I'm going to go and I'm going to get the image that I saved, Village. All right. And then I'm going to scale that, and I've already determined that in order to match my hexes, I'm going to go 8.75. Boom. All right. And when we zoom up on this, we see the these are going to be five-foot squares. And if I bring this up like so, and I look at the scale of this map, and I line this up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 times 5 is 100. It's exactly to scale of the map. All right. Move this down. This is going to be my main section here, and I'm going to use this as a template. I'm not going to try to copy this map as much as use it knowing this is the scale of how wide uh, the roads are here, you know. 5, 10, 15, this is 20 feet. So two carts can go by. You have these narrower roads uh, that are basically little five-foot areas. And I'm going to use this to build my map. Uh, again, I'm not, notice I'm already cut off. And in fact, I'm not going to use this whole map. I'm only going to use part of it. But I do want to have this central square. Okay. So this trace, you can either go like this, turn it all the way up, or you can turn it all the way off. All right. So let's start making the map. The terrain, I am going, you can go settlement, uh, which I tend to like, and I'm just going to say dry grass, okay? And again, if I turn that uh, trace image down, there's the dry grass, okay? And I just adjust that so that I can see. Uh, if I want to copy this road, let's say I want to do sand, right? This is going to be, it's just a dirt road. You can do whatever you want. I just, I like sand. And I take that down a little bit. And I zoom up. And I'm just going to copy this opening. Right. And again, it very, you don't, you don't have to think too much. You're just using this existing map. Creating your own. Okay, terrain. If you want that to happen quicker, you turn up your intensity. It starts much faster. Again, if you want it all the way up, it's quick. All right. now I've got a basic road structure. If you want to see what it looks like, you can do this. Turn this off. There's what you've got so far. 
Okay, turn it back up. So I'm going to build this central square. I'm going to use the idea from this map that I copied. And I'm going to go to my objects. Uh, I got these from a website for a two-minute tabletop, which I will give a link to. He sells all sorts of packets. They're a dollar. They're very affordable. And you have here all these different tokens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these and put them in. And I'm actually going to use... So you go like that. Well, look how small that is. Alt, you can increase the size of that. All right. And then when you select, I'm going to select this one and delete it. When you select this, you can increase it even farther. So you can take this and just put it over like so. And then I'm going to pick another object over here. Maybe um, this one. I can rotate that. It's set now to the four scale, which is nice. So I'll just go like that. I'll select it. Make that bigger. You know, fit that in however I want here. Let's zoom up. All right. And the nice thing is if I control C and V, I got another one, same size. You go like that. Okay. And, and if I say, oh, I'd like to have that a little bit bigger. Again, this is just a representation. You're going to make another layer eventually if you, if you want to, you know, create uh, the interior of this. What I'm thinking is the main, the only tavern in town. Again, 300 people. They don't have a big tavern. They don't have an inn, really. Uh, and then I maybe, you know, create uh, an outbuilding here. Let's see here. And I'm, always, I'm just going to try to use different structures so that I've now got them on the map. Let's see. Maybe this one right here. And put that there. Make it a little bit bigger. You know, because people bring their animals and whatnot. So that'll be a barn. Uh, then if I go to my terrain brush... I got my sand. I'm going to make that a little smaller. And I'll make a little road in here. Like so. I'm going to turn down that. Oops, no, I want that intensity there. Where is trace image? There we go. Terrain brush. Because if I've got animals here, Right, people are going to be bringing them out. And, okay. There we go. So now I'm going to speed up the process here a little bit. Uh, and just talk about this. I just picked out different buildings here. And I'm placing them uh, pretty much where they are on the original map. You don't have to do that. I kind of like the layout. I am going to add my own features as well. But for this little square, I'm just going to use uh, the existing setup. And again, you can easily maneuver those around. Uh, you can zoom in, uh, rotate them, just get them wherever you want. And I'm going to adjust the, once I got those buildings, the roads and whatnot. And these are little outbuildings. Everyone has a little outhouse behind their structure, at least the wealthier people. The poor people just have a hole. All right, and then over here, I'm going to have a... This is kind of the middle class area. These are probably landed farmers that don't have enough to live on. They have to live in town. Maybe they work in the vineyards uh, for people. But they have a little bit more money, but not as rich as the people that live in the main square. All right, just that. And as I said, I can then make some additional buildings here. Easy to make them, adjust them. All right, my roads, add that. The wear of people walking. And these are the rocks. This came with the Two Minute Dungeon. I'm going to scatter these around, I think. Just kind of positioning them here to look how they look. I think they look okay. All right. We'll see. And there's a fountain in the center of town, the center square where people get water. We also have some little water sources here for livestock. 
Now, I talked about the richest guy in town, Cyrus, and his son, Dulles. Uh, he's going to have an impressive house. He's going to have his own walls that he's built from the stone around here. And I'm going to give him one of these houses. And I'm, I want to have the big house, so I'll expand the walls. Not difficult in Dungeon Draft. It lets you edit points, and you can add points, pull them out. You know, can really make adjustments. You can make unusual shapes or whatever you want. But that gives him more room, so he'll have his own uh, building there, maybe a barn of some kind, and maybe he has a garden. Uh, he grows his stuff, his own water source, and he's so rich he's even got some shade trees. And a gate here. Notice you can put these on and then just adjust the wall using the points. There you go. This is going to be, I think, like the shanty town where the true poor live. These are ramshackle houses. These people put up. Uh, they're landless farmers or landless serfs, basically work in the vineyards or work for other people. Uh, but it's always good to have a little place like this because the players, that, the, someone that lives in here might have seen something with the raiders. Uh, the players might go here. They might have, you know, intrigue or something. So it's great to have these little, uh, and this is where kind of the ruffians of the town live. All right, so I've got this idea laid out here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit different. I'm going to make this created out of the barren hills. I'm going to have this kind of cut out from the rocks a little more. And that not only does it make it visually interesting, but I think it also makes it so that you, depending on what kind of encounters you have, you could have cover. So what I can do is I can create uh, a rocks, you know, like this. I can scatter them. The only problem there, of course, is they're not. To, so let's see, I go to scale four, and I can scatter. So I'm going to scatter these all around. Like, as I said, with the, you can control this, make them larger, smaller, uh, just to give a sense. I'm going to do the whole perimeter of this, and you can grab these and make them larger if you want for a true pile of giant boulders. If there's some kind of encounter there, it could be great for cover or difficult terrain. And I'm doing this quickly. Uh, obviously, I have it sped up, but also I'm making this, you know, you might want to put more care and thought into it. I'm just sort of scattering. I'm going to add some shrubs here. Again, this is mist shrouded, so there would be some growth. Obviously, they grow, uh, they have vineyards. So we'll throw in uh, some different plants. You can scatter those as well, different sizes. Again, I'm grabbing these boulders to make them bigger. Uh, and again, that the variety of sizes here. Again, it, this is the idea that this town was literally carved out of the rocks. It'll make it very you know, claustrophobic and uh, creepy. And I'll throw in some shrubs too. All right, so there's our finished map. Now we just have to export it. Export, it will ask you for a name, Mountain Village, goes through, and depending on how large it is in detail, well, that's pretty quick. And it always shows you the subdirectory where it is. There we go, Mountain Village, if you click on it, there you go. All right, so now if I say Fantasy Grounds Image, I import that file. Uh, dungeon Draft, Mountain Village, Select. There we have it. Uh, to line up the grid, you pick that. Usually this is about, I think, I'm going to say 81 by... 81, move that over like so. I always start the thing in the wrong spot, but okay. And then you can also turn off the aspect ratio if it's a little bit off and it looks like maybe is that 80 maybe it is
All right. So now we've got our map here. And uh, what do I got in here? I think I had a battle going on. Yep. There he is. Eldereth, right? All right. There you have it. So there you have your village map. Next time I'm going to be making at least one encounter map, uh, maybe some other buildings in town, maybe the tavern, something like that. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel and leave me some comments. Tell me about maps you've made. Uh, if you've used Dungeon Draft, I'd love to hear stories about that. Uh, in the meantime, of course, keep playing D&D, &D, my friends, and tell somebody else about it.